Gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, are you ready? Are you re are you ready? <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, it's the Cowboy and Judge show. Yeah, buddy. And I'm trying to do my best impersonation <laughs> of the excitement we're about to have at the family arena. Hopefully, maybe we're talking about it. Right. And some football. Football back mm -hmm. here in St. Louis. Talk about it, ladies and I gentlemen. I think they could uh, pipe some of that in, Kevin, for these, uh, when those cardboard fans are out there, if they could have you up at the speaker, that would be awesome. Sounded pretty good. Well, here's a practice. We got Gary Bowdy, right? Is that correct? And Mr. Jeff Hunt, the coach of what's coming to St. Louis, the uh, Indoor Arena Football Bandits, is that right? The St. Louis Bandits. And then Gary Bowdy, a longtime uh, announcer, you know, play-by-play, mm -hmm. -play, that kind of a thing, and, and helping uh, mm -hmm. bring the Bandits indoor football here uh, also to St. Louis, is that yeah. right? Really looking forward to it. And, and I know Cardinal Cowboy, he's played a little bit. You'll go into that, no doubt. Been a kicker on indoor football, tried out for the Rams kicking and stuff like that. <laughs> 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 but... Uh, a little more power this time behind this endeavor. Arena football has come and gone. Battle Hawks come and gone. Maybe they're back. How are you guys going to be different? What, what what's the bandits mean? You know, are we going to talk about this? Well, I I would say the first thing you know, being around this sport, this game, you know, being a minor league, not a major sport, is actually you know getting out in the community and showing showing the fans that how serious we are. And a lot of teams that hadn't hasn't had come here didn't you know they failed because they didn't get out in the community they didn't do the things that we like to do especially going to schools hospitals and actually just uh just being just just being you know you know re related with the fans you got to just be you know be carotid with the fans you know that's i think that's important yeah, I, a lot of times the kids get so involved that they yeah. don't know the difference between the rams or the or the cardinals or the yeah. blues and right. the and the bandits right. you just see guys up running around there and people when i was playing they they wanted my autograph right. like what do you guys realize what you're getting <laughs> 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 but i mean it was it was fun it was fun and yeah. it just creates an excitement it gives kids something really to right. look up to right. what i i seem to find just I, We've hung out a few times, done a couple little, right. little broadcasts, some live streams sh sharing with you because Gary is just a big advocate for St. Louis and St. <laughs> Charles and making sure that all the fun is, is known. And I, great to, I'm glad, glad we're friends, Gary, because I wouldn't know all the heavens inside track on these cool things <laughs> that are coming in. But you've really got some power behind you with some of the names, some of the athletes, some of the connections, your coaching history, and yeah. you're the owner. Yeah, I tell you, I, and I tell you, put this together, and I, and I, t I say this story before I started this project about 10, 11 months ago. I reached out to Gary, which Gary's been in, in sports for a long time and been around, you know, broadcasting. So I said the first person I wanted to reach out was was to Gary. Being in the AFL in my career, which is the highest indoor that you can actually possibly get to, a lot of guys want to get to the AFL or NFL, CFL. So knowing how to actually start an actual operation, I knew what I needed to do, and that's to, to try to reach out to some sponsors, get the coaching staff that I have. And actually, we're in talk with Jamie Martin of uh, the St. Louis Rams. We're in talk with a couple of other coaches, uh, Corey, uh, Corey uh, Mayfield, which is out of OU. Uh, he was in the NFL. He has NFL ties, and I also worked with him in San Antonio in, in arena football. Uh, I remember also bringing back uh, Coach May, you know, not Mayfield, but Coach Edmonds, which is from St. Louis. Mm -hmm. He's uh, was with the River City Rage. He's a great coach. He's been in the league for about 15 years. So I got Rob Finley, which is coaching at uh, Brentwood. He's a great, you know, coach. He was also a player with the River City Rage. Was one of the standout uh, defensive backs. So I'm glad to have him back. But again. Getting Gary, bringing a lot of positive people, you know, meeting, like I said, Cowboy, I know he was a you know, kicker and stuff for the Monsters. Just networking with a lot of people, and I know what it takes. I got all the practice facilities done. I got, you know, fitness places where they need to work out and train, housing, all that's done. Uh, all the hard stuff is done, pretty much just getting the things that we need so we can be a, a powerhouse team. And so Gary is announcer, you know, play-by-play, -play, you know, that uh, breadth of experience that you have. I don't know if I got the name right, but I'm going to go out on a limb. You know, not only uh, is St. Louis, you know, uh, NFL free at the moment, uh, we also have this kind of storied past with the Iowa Barnstormers, if I got the name right, with uh, Kurt Warner and all that. And, and so, we, you know, you would think that an indoor football, arena football league where could succeed here if it was going to anywhere. No NFL team around. Uh, the one that was here had a storied past with an AFL indoor quarterback that everybody loves here. I mean, are you guys going to be able to capitalize on that? Am I just dreaming? You know, wh why is that not front and center? Or? Yeah, that, that's a great question, uh, Judge. And, and again, thank Judge and Cowboy for allowing us to be here. But Thanks the for point coming. Is, 
The point is, I, well, I've been broadcasting since 99 at the Family Arena, the Indoor Football League there, and the, the teams have come and gone. Now, the, we, the reason I like to talk about that is that the individuals that owned those particular teams were not really from the St. Louis area and really embedded their, their roots into the St. Louis area. Coach is. Coach Hunt is. So you have that. So first of all, it's coming from the heart now, and, and he has a lot of responsibility with that. These teams, as, they, as I mentioned, started at the Family Arena in 99. Every three years, uh, they would just take off. Mm -hmm. And bottom line is, is that they would have the opportunity to, to expand because they, they had people, they had the fans there. Right. Because as you mentioned, Judge, there were real, there's, no, there's no football around. Mm -hmm. so, and, and these people are hungry for that because they would sell out at, 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 um, watching the Rams and things of that sort. But bottom line is, this, that's how this is going to be different with Coach Hunt and his background and, and his longevity in the St. Louis area and his track record. When you go to the website, I know Cardinal Cabo is going to put that up on the website or on the uh, backboard, or it's there already. Mm -hmm. Go to the website, and you're going to see a little bit of bio on Coach, where he's, where he's been in the past 10 years, mm -hmm. and how he's really excelled uh, as Coach. Well, like I said, you know, AFL is the, well, we say AFL 1, which is the highest. I mean, you know, and I started when it was in the NIFL, which was River City Rage, uh, just been coaching around. But, but again, bringing in the coaches, bringing in key players, and, and it's a lot of players. I can't say right now, but uh, half, about maybe a third of my team are NFL players, and I, th I think what's important is to bring in, you know, skilled guys so we can get out in the community, go to the hospitals, go to the schools, but also bring in key players that want to win, bring in players that want to be out in the community. And that's the thing that I think the teams that was, be that was here before didn't do. Uh, I was with the uh, River City Raiders uh, back in 2015 never did any promotion work. You have to get out in the community. It's very important. When I was with the San Antonio Talents, we, we seated about 27, 32,000 fans. But our main thing, we got out in the community. We went to go see uh, the people that was in the military. We spent the whole day with uh, POWs. Uh, we did things like that. It was very important. That's why we sold out at the arena. So it's important, and I'm going to make sure that my players see that, that we need to get out. It's, you know, And I think that's, that, that would help you know, help us uh, bring in the crowd to the stadium. So I have to say, the thing that, as a fan, mostly, yeah. I mean, I played all kinds of football. I was a kicker. I don't know if that counts as a player or not. No, I see but, you a player. Okay. <laughs> You're a player once a game. I, I, no. I, we knew things were going bad when yeah. I was making a tackle. Yeah. Right. And that happened about, I, I think, of eight career tackles. But, <laughs> but um, literally, when you look at the, the, the depth of the team, yeah. and, and, and I got to be on the inside, you know, as the kicker on a team that played, we right. Some of those guys had played college. Some of them played high school. Right. A few of them played a little bit of pro yeah. and, uh, and other pro levels. Right. But when you're talking about some of the players you're talking about, they almost half of them, you said, have played in the NFL. Yeah. And the coaches that I know, and I won't drop the names that I've heard you say because that's up to you if you want to share it. But right. I'm, I'm like, holy cow, that guy's involved? He's yeah. like world famous, one of the top quarterbacks in the yeah. history of the NFL. I mean, this thing is well-founded, yeah. well, well-backed, I mean, and with some big names. And what fans want to see yeah. is a top-quality product. They want to be able to reminisce like you're talking about judge man remember we had kurt warner out here yeah. they could, this guy reminds me of him you know yeah. that kind of stuff is really what draws fans right. in they can see some real excitement that takes it to that you know close to that right. next level some of the guys you've got have been there right. trying to get back right. tell us a little bit more about that well like i said you know you got to start off with a quarterback of course so, like i said kurt warner playing for the iowa born storms uh my quarterback is donovan portiel university of mexico he was with the packers detroit lions he was in otas he learned a lot from aaron, aaron Rodgers. uh kevin rogers out of minnesota state he was with the uh, vikings rams baltimore ravens he's coming in i got heath harden out of miami ohio also a big time safety uh he was in atlanta falcons uh camp he got injured while in camp. Uh, he's healthy now. I spoke to his agent. He's ready to go. Um, all my linemen are about 6'8", six, 6'9". Six, I got a, a, a couple guys that's from 6'7". Six, six, One of my guys that's actually here in St. Louis, he's 6'7", out of Ole Miss. I'm happy that he's local. Then I got Keenan Mace. Is, I was which, just going to bring up Keenan Mace. I know he's a local talent, right? Yeah, he's, he's on my roster as well. And uh, he's, you know, he's actually he's trimmed down a little bit. He's about, about 260, 270. He's been bragging about losing weight on yeah, that. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but he's, 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 been, he's been training stuff and then, like I said, working a lot too, his family guy. But uh, he's excited. Me and him had ties in the AFL a lot. Uh, he was with Dallas Cowboys and stuff. So he's he's reside here, him and his wife and stuff. So happy to have it. I actually have two or three guys from Lindenwood. So I'm, I'm excited. I got Chase Abbotton out of Mizzou. 
Uh, he's on my staff, you know, not staff, but he's on the roster as well. But I don't want to say any more names because, you know, these guys have, looked, have been in the NFL a little longer and stuff, and they're ready to play. And, they, and the thing is, too, is, is, is being loyal to your players and, and loyal to the organization. So that's, that's why a lot of them want to come play for me. And, and not to admit, some of the guys that have made it in the NFL yeah. – did come right out of high school. That's yeah. kind of rare, but I yeah. used to watch, look at the rosters and say, where did these guys come from? Yeah. You know, Nebraska, Mizzou, mm -hmm. Texas, right. uh, Alabama. Right. Oh, um, Jenkins High School in, <laughs> in some small town. Right. And, and, and literally, but when you've got a, a – when you start naming, you've got Packers, Cowboys. Yeah. I and mean, when you start to list out some of the, the talent yeah. you've got, Gary, are, does this make it exciting for you as the announcer <laughs> saying, hey, man, this guy tootled underneath – Aaron Rodgers. I mean, when you talk about Aaron Rodgers, I mean, replace Brett Favre. Now we're talking the elite players in the league played with those guys. They were the back, went one injury away from being the quarterback for the Green Bay Packers, potentially. Is that what we're looking at? Yeah, and this is kind of a breeding area for the NFL again. Uh, the NFL looks at colleges naturally, but now this is a professional league where the AFL is professional. This is professional. The AAL that Coach will speak about here in a couple seconds. And and, uh, and that, this is the breeding area, as I mentioned, but the thing is, is that these people, they're going to see that there are, there are going to be scouts. In the 20 years I've been broadcasting indoor mm -hmm. football, there, there have always been scouts in the stands right. and coming into the press box and saying, hey, Gary B., who's number eight? You know, and they, they, they have their eyes out. And that's how, if you look at some of the backgrounds of some of these NFL players, you'll see that they have the background of playing in uh, either AFL or some, uh, uh, yeah, or XFL. XFL right? Yeah, or the, so there's some relationships there. And then and Coach Hayes, who is the, the, uh, the coach of the, uh, of the Battle Hawks, which look like they're going to come uh, judge, you had mentioned, probably in 2022. They're taking a year hiatus here. And coaches in, in great relationships with him. So basically this team here, some of the individuals have that opportunity to go to the XFL uh, or jump the XFL and go right to the NFL. Right. That will see. But that is exciting, though, Cowboy, when you talk about what, where these people came from, where these players came from. Right. Uh, great athletes. It's not easy to make this team. It's not, as you know, as you know. Well, you yeah, when I, well, that, when I, but, but yeah, I mean, literally, I, I'll never forget the tryouts that I've been involved with. And it was, there were six or seven kickers there lined up, and every one of them could kick the ball out the back of the end zone. You know, and, and then it was a matter of then who had the most accurate kick when it right. came down to it, it right. combined with that. And then who had the history? Who had the, and boy, you're lucky. There's, if you mess up, there's somebody waiting in the wings right there ready to fill your spot. And that's what you've got here. And it looks like the talent is there to be had. And the other, like I said, the other end of that is these guys are one step away from, hey, our defensive back yeah. just got taken out against the 49ers. <laughs> right. We need you to come up to the, to the big club. Right. Uh, can, you, can you get on a plane today, <laughs> right. right? Is that something? And, and, that's, and, and, and it's funny you say that because a lot of players, you know, we bring in on a weekly basis just because they want to get some film uh, and their agent tell you, hey, he's just here to get film. You know, coach, can you come in? Like Quentin, Quentin, uh, Quincy uh, Vatcher from the Texas Longhorn, he called me last weekend. Uh, stud. I mean, drafted by the Redskins. He wants to come get film. He wants to get right back in the NFL. He had a real bad knee injury. He's healthy right now. So, hey, by all means, I'm, my my door's open. So I'm gonna bring in players like that that want to get. But the thing is, I, I let them know this. We, we we're here to win, and we're gonna be out in the community. He said, Coach, I'm all for it. So I want to bring in ball players like that. But getting back to the American to the American Arena League. It hasn't been around a long time. This would have been this would have been going with the pandemic coming in. It would have been going in a six year. In 2021, would have been our seventh season. The commissioner is a former. He worked for the Do LA Dodgers. Also worked for the Tampa Bay Devil Rays. So he's a big time major league baseball guy. Great business guy. Uh, and it's a lot of things that I can't talk about. I, but I will say this: his his the owners that he have now, which is Ted Ginn Jr. He's one of the uh, players that played for the Saints. He's the owner. Thomas Davis, that played linebacker for the Carolina Panthers, he's the owner. Uh, and I can't think of the actual UFC fighter, but we have some some powerful guys that's in this in this uh, you know league, and and we're going to be getting many more. We have a new team just came in, the Tampa Bay uh, Tornadoes. They just came in about a couple of weeks ago, so I've already got the schedule. We're going to open up home uh, with Chicago being first, March 20th, and the oh, okay. 27 Kansas City, and then we'll be on the road to Charlotte to play Ted Ginn's them team. So I got the schedule. Uh, it might be a few changes later on, but they're going to allow us to open up uh, twice. Well, so. tell me, Coach, I mean, why – you? I just can see the connectivity you've got. Right. A lot of these guys are following. You can make calls, and these guys are oh, yeah. answering. Yeah. What is it – I mean, I, I happen to break out a couple of these. I see that. These are the rings from 
couple championships I won I playing some, some minor league football. Right. You've got some championships. Right. You've got the clout. Yeah. Tell everybody a little bit about that. Why are these players listening to you? Why, well, why do you? Why do they call, answer when you call? I, I'm sure we played, played no matter what sport it is coming up. The main thing is being loyal to these guys, you know. And the one thing I learned in the AFL is being a player coach. I don't know if you, you probably, we probably hear that all the time. Player coach, understanding them. You have to understand them. And 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 when they when they have faith in you and they trust in you, they'll tell other players, "Hey, go play for Coach Hunt," you know. And I've helped them get to another level. I made a phone call and got players to the NFL, all called CFL. I got a lot of dear friends in the, in the National Football League and also in the CFL. I know scouts and everything. So I make a phone call. Um, I got one of the uh, Ram defensive backs. I got him a, a two-year deal uh, with the Montreal Alouettes. And so what I'm saying is they trust you. When they trust you, the word spreads. I mean, so, might need to get my leg warmed up a little bit since I come out of retirement. Sure. Not, 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 you you kick right, don't you? I kick right. Well, you <laughs> play with the left. But okay. it's for, okay. We're on camera, so I have to make it. Well, well boy, I, I think it really comes into play, too, yeah. is, is Coach's reputation yeah. that comes into play doing. here. Uh, he can't naturally name a lot of the potential advertisers that we have out there. Pretty big-name people. Big name. They've done their homework before they met with the coach. They said, okay. We know who this guy is. He's just another guy coming off the street saying, hey, I'd like you to sponsor, be a sponsor on our right. team. No, not only that, hey, how about part owner possibly or, or whatever it may be. But the thing is, is that they've done the homework and some of these big name people that he'll, uh, big name companies that he'll be able to expand upon in the yeah. future, uh, you're really going to see that they've done the homework. With, so he's got it lined up. Yeah. You know, right now with everything going on, Judge, you know what's going to happen in five, six months? We don't know. So the thing is, he's got them lined up so when the time comes that we're saying, okay, now we're ready to put pen to the paper. Right. Uh, he's already got it lined up, and all he does is make a phone call. Hey, uh, Mr. XX, here we are. We're ready to go. Let's rock and roll. Yeah. And that's key, I think, Judge. Would you agree? Financially, that's where most businesses fail, right? If you don't have the financial backing because you can't get the right resources, the right athletes, the right players, that's where it comes in as critical. Yeah, I um it just so happens yesterday was on a phone call uh, for naming rights, you know, for a local, you know, stadium or field. And um, they're all, you know, not all of them. M was MLS right now. They're trying to, you know, their, their field's uh, three or four million for naming rights. I don't know if they're going to get it. This one here I'm doing is, you know, is far south of that. But um, they need it. These teams, you know, depending on the relationship between the facility and the team and the league, I mean, the, they need that money. Uh, to come in and you can hear it, you know, especially like you mentioned, Gary B, that uh, what COVID and Corona 2020, what that's doing, you know, to the expectations of marketers and advertisers and people with pockets with money in them, they don't know as much as you don't know. And so it just makes it that much more difficult. I was actually going to move into that and ask you guys, I mean, you're talking March, you know, what I've read, <clears throat> which probably is suspect, but at some level that the NFL, Major League Baseball, and NBA, they don't expect to sell a game out for another two years. Yeah. You know, and that was commonplace for at least, you know, 10 teams out of those yeah. leagues. Yeah. And so they don't know, yeah. right? And we don't know after 9-11 when you went uh, to see who American Airlines or Southwest Air, they didn't know who and when people were going to get back on airplanes. And it took three, five, really like five to seven years before it normalized again. Right. Yeah. So I don't know. Sports... You know, the way the sports goes in the United States, the way business and, and the economy, it has a lot of correlation because people, uh, their discretionary income is what they use, you know, to go to those stadium events anyway. And so I just wonder, uh, I wish, you know, I want you guys to succeed as best you can, but man, it seems like a tough path ahead. Yeah. Well, our owner, um, as the owner, but the commissioner, Tony, we have to push back because we're only going to play 12 games and actually out of those 12 games two of those games are nine nine lead schedules so we're not our season is really not that long so we have to push it back we can even push it back for us may and still get june july or even push it june and still play july august okay so, so the thing is is we want to make sure the fans are safe make sure the, the players make sure that just you know everybody in the arena the workers you know, we don't want anybody coming in and catching whatever. We want everything. We're hoping that it gets back to normal. So as of right now, we if we did play today, 
you know, the distance would still be the, the six feet, you know, the, the seats would be spaced out and things like that. And also, uh, and that's what one of the owners had a question with one, uh, I think I want to say, in, I want to say in Texas, the arena's telling him right now, let's just wait until next month. Okay. And, and even, even uh, I can throw one sponsor out, Dick Sporting Goods. They want to write me a check like right now, but they want to wait until next month to write the check. I spoke to the CEO in, up in, in uh, Pennsylvania and he's like, coach, we, we definitely going, we won't name and rights. So let's just, if we can put it off another 30 days, not a problem at all. So that's what you have to, you have to be patient through all this, whatever, because mm -hmm. it's been affected through all the entire world. So we have to just be patient and just wait it out and see. So, but I do have some key players, you know, I throw Southwest Airline Frontier. I'll go ahead and throw them out there, but they want to, they want to, they want to they wanna come aboard. So that's I'm excited. That's what was really helped solidify my confidence in this because yeah. I've heard seen teams come and yeah. I've been part of a number of those right. teams um, as a kicker, and et cetera. But literally, when you start to put in the big, what should I say, if you got the talent right. and you got the finances and you've got a city that's, that is interested in football, as right. we know uh, St. Louis is, now you've got all the pieces in place. Right. And now we're in a position where this can, could really take off. Right. What's next? Where, where are we at with this thing? Is it ready to go? I mean, I know you're going to start oh, yeah. doing some marketing. You're going to start doing, you got a oh. website, you got your social media starting to get ramped up. Is this, thing, this thing's happening, oh, right? Oh, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, like I said, all the hard work is done. Uh, right now, I'm just work, waiting with the sponsors. A lot of sponsors are calling me and stuff, you know, and for us, the players, you know, I can start signing players. As I just found out a few days ago, I can start signing players like right now. Did um, anybody bring a pen? <laughs> you're the one you're I don't know. I, you're I not took, quite 60 yet. You could probably still <laughs> probably kick still kick a ball off the tee. I, 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 could, I, could, I, I argue that I can still kick 55, 60 uh, yards, and I it, I would just love to be part of it just to help coach or yeah, just, right. And I like to be involved from the entertainment side right. of it, just to bring the hype. I love to I'm, have you out all there. about I mean, St. Louis. Well, but I tell you what, you know, two of my one of my kickers was from the University of Alabama. He was with the Cleveland Browns, and and uh, I'm better he, than him. I don't know who it is. No. I'm <laughs> I wow. give you, I'll give you his name. He's six two two oh five, but he's he's a uh, one two national championship under Nick. So he's he's a, he's a stud, and uh, and also a Corey Adams, Adamson. You what yeah. you know and, and a whole bunch of great groups. And like I know. said, I really just for me it's a matter yeah. of being involved because I always want to pump up St. Louis. Right, right. I, 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 my argument is with the whole Cardinal Cowboy thing is I would not have survived. I would not be wow. here uh, coming out of the coma and the accident that I was involved with I remember you from a drunk you. driver. Wow had it not been for such an incredible community right. and the sports that really motivated me i but baseball baseball i argue gave me the, the right. skills the drive to pull the ventilator out of my right. own throat that's, that's and I, a think, blessing. I think sports is so critical to a community and we talk about how you know when you don't have sports what does that do to a community to keep the interactivity and keep people connected and to keep people in you know because you've got divides on all sides of all kinds of different issues that people take issue with but when they've got a team it doesn't matter what their personal beliefs are about whatever they right. love that team and it helps to unite everybody right. Right. and i think that's what we got here well and i think also too cowboy you talked about sport, uh, uh, media out there how do you get uh, out there and talk about that the media how do you get your word out there that's your business and and what we plan on doing is having coaches show starting probably the first of the year, yeah. just depending on what goes on. Every, every say, Thursday, for instance, we're not sure. We're still narrowing that right. down. At different, lo at some certain locations that people will start becoming aware. Right. So we start in January, and then by May, uh, or I should say March, oh, March, people are going, oh, wow, can we sign up right now? Mm -hmm. You know, other minor league teams have done it. Here, we're going to sign up. We're going to sign you up right now, right. getting ready for the league. Uh -huh. You know, it's for three months away. So we'll do a show, uh, whether it be streaming uh, you know, with you, with the social media, uh, co uh, Cowboy. That aspect comes into play. Well, we'll bring in the players to be interviewed. We'll bring in some of the advertisers. We'll bring in the judge. We'll bring in Cardinal Cowboy. Yeah, People want to see, you know, this, first of all, and then see what this is all about. Right. And with you guys, with the help of you guys, as, as you're doing right now, we really appreciate that. But What's taking that? it the next step, having these weekly shows at a restaurant or wherever it may be, will start advertising and telling people what's out there along with your social media advertising. And what's so cool about the, the opportunity to have it at these restaurants is that people get to really interact. Right. I know that when the Rams would do things like that, other teams, like you, you could only get so close to somebody when they're on the field. Right. But at an event like this, you can walk right up next to them and get a picture with them hanging out. You know, if Jamie Martin's going to be involved, how cool is that? Yeah. Former, you know, he was the backup to Kurt Warner, I believe, for a, a long time. Yeah. I mean, these are guys that were in the league. They're, they're involved in our community, and right. they're going to be having these events where you can really interact and get to connect right. with the team and the players. And like I said, I, I, I'm, you know, I'm ho hoping Jamie, you know, he's still got to work a few things out, but, you know, for what he's telling me, he's, 
he's excited. I mean, and he tells Gary the same thing. I'm excited. I, you know, I can't wait and stuff. And, um, and I, like I said, again, I have three practice locations, you know, uh, and, and one's uh, in Illinois, which I'm not sure we want to go that far, but it's, it's, it's available if I need it. So, uh, but the guys, you know, they don't have to, when they come here, they have to want for nothing. Everything's done. Well, talk about it. Oh, go ahead. Well, talk about it as a matter of getting in, involved with the team. If you say, I think I got the skills, I want to come out, you've got yeah. a, a practice, a, tri a tryout coming out. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. So, so actually, we have tryouts uh, November 14th, which will be at 6, 6 p.m. to 8. Uh, Registration is at 5 o'clock. Uh, and uh, what I'm looking for in this tryout for players to come out uh, to try to earn a spot to come into training camp to compete. Uh, we're going to run training camp about three weeks. Uh, and the reason why I want them to come out and compete because the thing is when they come to training camp, they're going to be competing with guys that have been on the NFL level. So either you push the guy that's a little bit more better than you or you'll be released. So it's, you know, it, but there's some good athletes here in St. Louis, trust me. I've seen some play, but the thing is, can they come in and earn a spot on this team? Because I'm, I'm bringing in some guys that can play. Put the challenge out there. Make yeah. them push your guys. Yeah. You, you never know. Some guy. You, you never know. I, I'll, just a couple stories come to mind. There's the guy who just played golf in his backyard forever and ever and ever. And then one day he said, I'm going to try out for the PGA. And he made the tour. Wow. And so Incredible. you never know. I mean, that's a different. Incredible. <laughs> hitting guys and, and tackling is a little different. Wow. But, hey, man, if you've got the skills yeah. and you've got the drive, right. you might be somebody, you know, speed, agility, all those right. kinds of things. Right. Maybe somebody comes out of the woodwork. And, and, that's never... what, and that's what we're looking for. I mean, and, and the thing is, I always believe in giving someone opportunity because that's I, I, my opportunity was some years ago. And there are reasons that play for the New York Giants with Lawrence Taylor. He gave me an opportunity. Mike White gave me an opportunity for the River City Rays my first year. So all the coaches that I can think of get, have given me an opportunity to, to be a part and to learn. And I know what it took to learn to get where I'm at today. So, How do these guys, uh, when they're practicing or trying out, and I watched, uh, you know, Brady get a little upset last night. Uh, <laughs> what um, When they're playing and interacting, how does the COVID and corona – affect their ability to you know have full contact i mean there's really i don't know if they're wearing special helmets it's got you know plastic in between the the grids or yeah. what is that a concern or is it are they, everybody just signs a waiver and they go at it or basically is signing a waiver right now all the nfl yeah. they're back playing again they don't have the shields or anything to that effect it, it's everybody's going to be tested they're going to have their naturally have their uh, uh, temperature taken care of making sure they're right. signing the waiver saying they do not have any other problems within their, themselves. Right. And then after that waiver is taken care of, they just go at it. And, and, and tryouts, Judge, I don't know if you've ever been to any of a tryout, it is actually hands-on. I mean, yeah. they, they're anxious to make it to that next level. And right. if you don't show your aggressiveness when you're out there, as Cowboy did when he was kicking, he, you know, he was showing it, he showed <laughs> his stuff. Uh, because you don't get a second chance sometimes. Yeah. You know, you have to make a good impression the first, first time. time yeah. Because after that, uh, they forget about you. You know, second place. You know, who ended up in second place last year? Mm -hmm. But, but nobody bottom, remembers second place. Nobody no, remembers no, second no. place. So you get out there and you're yeah. really going after it. So uh, yeah. I don't think the, the COVID situation, because we are going to be, as as we mentioned, uh, proactive yeah. about who comes onto that field, who comes in to the Olympia Athletics uh, location here for that tryout. Right. And we've only got like 30 seconds. Yeah, well, I mean, it goes fast when you're yeah, having fun. So, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for tuning in. Thanks for coming on the show, guys. I appreciate you. You're listening to the Cowboy Judge Show. Giddy up. Giddy up. Thanks, guys. Thank you.